When we ask who is poor in the United States, the answer depends on how we measure poverty. People have a lot of different ideas about what poverty is. For some, it's about social factors. For others, it's about what people are able to buy. But in many ways, it really comes down to money. When the U.S. government measures poverty to learn about how people are doing and to determine eligibility for social programs, for example, it uses an economic measure. And specifically, it's measuring how much income a person or a household brings in each year. In the 1960s, when the government began developing a poverty measure, they needed to decide under what level of income someone would be considered poor. Ideally, they would have had detailed information about the costs of keeping different sizes of families fed, clothed, and sheltered, along with all the other expenses households have. But that kind of information just didn't exist. So Molly Orshansky, a government economist and statistician, began looking for a way to figure out how much money it took for families to get by. And she wanted it to be based on some real measure of what families had to pay for the things they needed. At the time, the U.S. Department of Agriculture had detailed sets of food plans broken down by household size. And surveys had found that families spent about a third of their income on food. And so by multiplying the cost of a no-frills food plan by three, Orshansky was able to develop income thresholds for families of all different sizes. Families with income below the threshold were considered to be poor, and families with income above the threshold were considered to be not poor. And that's how the government has been doing it ever since. The measure developed by Orshansky became known as the official poverty measure. According to this measure, poverty fell quickly starting in the 1960s, but then leveled out and has consistently been between about 11 and 15 percent with the rate rising during recessions and dropping when the economy has been strong. But the formula behind the official poverty measure has become outdated as the cost of food has dropped while other costs like housing have gone up. And critics have said that the measure doesn't give us a complete picture of poverty in the United States because it doesn't account for some of our most important anti-poverty programs like refundable tax credits and SNAP or food stamps. It also doesn't take into account necessary expenses for medical care, transportation, and child care. And the threshold is the same, whether you live in expensive places like New York City or in places where housing costs less, like, say, rural Wisconsin. Over the years, researchers and policymakers have discussed the need for an updated measure. And in 2011, the U.S. Census Bureau first published a new measure called the Supplemental Poverty Measure, or SPM. This new measure calculates the current costs of necessities. It expands the definition of a household to include people who aren't related by marriage, birth, or adoption. It makes geographic adjustments for differences in housing costs. And when it counts resources, it considers not just income, but also the value of public benefits and tax credits. And it subtracts the costs of medical and work expenses. Here's the official poverty measure line that we looked at before. And here, this red line represents an historical SPM developed by researchers at Columbia University calculated back to 1967. The line for the supplemental poverty measure starts much higher, but is now close to the line for the official poverty measure. Much of this shift reflects the success of our anti-poverty programs in helping to support families. But the official poverty measure is still useful in some ways. It gives us a consistent measure to track poverty over time, and it functions as a starting point for determining eligibility for many of our social programs. Understanding how each of these poverty measures can be used and what they do and don't measure is important to understanding who is poor in the United States.